Hi, I'm Patrice Johnson. I am known as the Nordic Food Geek and Meatball Historian. And today I want to prepare for you a modern version of what I think of as New Nordic. Uh, it's going to be a barley risotto and we're going to add to it some locally grown mushrooms and some Lake Superior trout that's been smoked and also some really lovely sheep brie from Wisconsin. So we've got all sorts of local foods going into our barley risotto. What I want to do with these normally when I make a recipe with traditionally harvested mushrooms that I get maybe in the supermarket, I'm using butter or oil to saute them. But the trick with these mushrooms, uh, the forager told me, is to actually start them in a dry pan. So what, depending on what you're using, you could choose to either start them in a dry pan, you could even roast them in the oven if you wanted to, or you can saute them in some butter and maybe some olive oil. I like to buy locally, locally sourced uh, vegetables as often as I can, especially in the winter. And you'd be surprised at the options. We actually have quite a few, including these mushrooms. And of course, cheese. We are known for our dairy here in our region. Dairy is one of those things also that when we're talking about Nordic food, dairy is such an important part of that equation. And we're really lucky here in our region to have happy cows and sheep and goats making beautiful cheeses for us. And we couldn't have Nordic food without fish. So we're going to be adding some beautiful trout. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of butter into my mushrooms. They're just starting to soften up a little bit. And you can use any mushrooms you want. And these are actually starting to get on some, some nice color there. Leave them alone. And while they are cooking, I suppose I can start chopping up some garlic as well. Even in Minnesota, we've got stuff happening all year round. And uh, one of my favorite markets is in St. Paul. And all of the ingredients and produce and whatnot that are sold there have to come from within like 50 miles or something. And this last couple years, we have been getting fresh ginger grown in Minnesota. And the ginger that you can get at these markets is the most delicate yet spicy, amazing stuff. And it's a little expensive, <laughs> but it's worth it. I'm gonna add my shallots. So this is pretty low temp, like I said. We don't want them to brown. Just kind of sweat a little. And then once they soften up a little bit, we're going to add our risotto. So I've added the risotto, and then we'll just kind of coat it with the butter. And now we're gonna add some white wine. And turn that heat up a little bit. We want to reduce it. And I always say just use the wine you're drinking that night. I'm gonna add a little bit of our garlic. I don't think I'm gonna add the whole thing though. It smells pretty good. And some salt and pepper. If you want to measure, go ahead. I kind of just like to eyeball things. 
And then this is some dried dill. Now this is some chicken stock that I've got. I brought it up to a simmer and then I brought it back down to just below a simmer so it's nice and hot. And I'm gonna start adding about a quarter to a half cup at a time of the hot stock into the risotto. And with risotto, you never want it to be too wet and you never want it to be too dry. So you just keep watching it. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. And once the barley starts to break up the starches, we're gonna see it thicken up a little bit and it gets almost creamy, even though there's no cream in here, just butter. It will start to look creamy. And all in all, this will take anywhere from 35 to 40 minutes we'll start tasting it and it may take us all, as much as 50 minutes for us to add all of the stock and for the risotto to really thicken up nice. This is a beautiful trout. Remove the skin and then this is always the tricky part for me, getting rid of the bones. Sometimes, if you just break it here, the bones will come right out. And I believe I'm going to add our fish to the mushrooms. Our risotto is almost done. The barley is just getting tender. And you can see it's just a little bit of the stock coming together, so we're gonna let that reduce a little bit longer. And you can see it has gotten really creamy. And like I said earlier, considering there's only butter in here and stock, all of that good creamy stuff is just the starch coming out of the barley. We're going to be adding some peas, and of course the mushrooms we cooked earlier, and the salt fish, or the dried fish, smoked fish. And I'm also thinking that this could use a bit of lemon. So I've got a Meyer lemon and I'm gonna zest it. We'll use the zest for sure. Probably not gonna need a whole lot of this, just a touch. And I've also got some of that brie we looked at earlier. Typically when you have a sheep or a goat cheese, it can be a little gamey for some people, or it's got, just got that kind of, you, you can tell it's not a cow, so people aren't used to it. This is one of those rare cheeses that is so mild and lovely that the first time I tasted it, I didn't know what animal it came from, but I knew that it was delicious and I think uh, the cheesemonger even said she thought it would be really good with the smoked fish. So we'll try that today. You could also use a fontina with this recipe is great, or any kind of mild flavored cheese, or anything nutty. Let me turn the heat up just a little bit before we add in the peas. So this is roughly a cup of peas. They were frozen and just thaw them, put them under the rinse, and we'll just stir those in. And we're just gonna cook it until the peas get warm. It's gonna take a minute or two. And now I'm gonna turn the heat off and stir in our mushrooms and our fish. We just want to warm it up. We don't want to actually cook it. We know the mushrooms are already cooked. And the fish just needs to be reheated. And then I'm gonna add some of our beautiful brie. All right, now we're just gonna let that cheese melt a little bit. Zest 